Surin Islands, which are just south of the Burmese border and just north of the more famous Similan Islands. The Surin Islands, I guess, get about a 20th of the tourism numbers, so it's supposed to be a lot healthier and better conditioned than the Similan Islands. On this tour, I guess we're supposed to go to several snorkel spots, stay three days, two nights, and also go to a native village where there's about 150 people. There's a few islands in the Surin chain, including very famous Richelieu Rock, which is considered one of the best diving sites in the world. I don't think we're going to go there because it's more for scuba and less for snorkel. Or through snorkeling Thailand, and it was rebranded through Sea Star. So that's who we're going with. And they served us a breakfast. It was a very nice breakfast of toasted white bread and instant coffee. Didn't come for the food. <laughs> that's true. The tour comes with nine meals: round trip to your hotel, overnight stay in the park, tent, and your snorkel equipment. Awesome. Here we go. We made it. We made it and it's beautiful. This is a village for the Moken people and they were originally a seafaring people. So they all lived nomadically on boats. And I think pretty recently they settled into this village. I think they said 84 families live here. About a hundred people. About a hundred people. I thought yeah. they said a little more, but yeah, something like that. <laughs> they take you here so you can support their village and buy stuff from their gift shops or just take a look and see how they live. There's also supposed to be lots of cats. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Be, be careful of the guts. So let's go explore it. If I was here, I feel like it would almost be invasive to have people like coming up, taking pictures of you all day. But they're sitting here smiling, waving, posing. They're very friendly. Yeah. I mean, I guess to some extent they did kind of set this up and like allow people to come here. But it's still pretty just cool to see. Never seen anything like this. Definitely not. Looking for the side you wouldn't expect this to have like electricity, running water, satellites. Yeah, almost all the houses have solar panels. That's pretty cool. Times are changing. I know it's really small, but I almost wish they gave us a little more time to explore. So this is a spot off the north Sur Island. Yeah. The name of it. Um, just right off of it, and it was only about five minutes from the village, and we get 40 minutes. Let's go! Nice yeah, it was. The first week was really nice in the shallows. The coral was relatively healthy. It wasn't perfect, but better than a lot of places we've seen. Yeah, a little bleach, but still like a lot of coverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say most of it was alive. Not as many fish as we wanted, but still good variety. And I think we're going to the next spot now. We'll find out. Lunch. Lunch. The water is incredible right here. Do you see how clear it was? Yeah. So beautiful. And the jungle too. The yeah. jungle's fantastic. And you can hear all the birds. There's so many birds. Yeah. So excited. Is this where we're staying, this island? Yes. So since we're separating groups and going on a smaller boat, we are taking our belongings, mm -hmm. except for what we need to swim, and then dropping those off for lunch. This is what they serve you here. It looks like some sort of stewed vegetable, fried chicken, rice, fruit, and some sort of a seafood salad. I imagine it'll be pretty similar every day. Give it a try, Rand. Mm. The temperature of the food is a little suspicious. What, you don't want tropical room temperature buffet <laughs> food? <laughs> I to give everybody on the island to hear you for like three days. <laughs> I've had a lot of food poisoning lately. And this is like exactly what you're not supposed to eat. <laughs> Everything else has been hot. Mm. 
You're pretty good. Cool. This is really nice though, it's really beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. This beach is gorgeous and it's kind of nice that we decided to stay overnight because the group kind of broke apart. And now there's like no hours. one here. It's basically a private beach. And the camp's over there? I think the camp is over Oh, do we have to walk there? No, they're gonna take us. Hi, boat. Okay, this next boat we're getting on is called the long tail. It's like the indigenous boat used in Thailand. They are called a long tail boat because they have a big old long rotor off the back, or whatever you call it, propeller. Yeah. Off like a meter or two. Big long cap. Look, there's a long tail. Well, I guess it has a lot of maneuverability. <laughs> Okay, so they're saying we're doing a drift dive over that way? Well, a drift dive, we're gonna swim over there and they're gonna pick us up. Sweet. Yeah. Makes cool. it easy. That diving was incredible. Second spot was like swimming in a postcard. It was just amazing. They just dropped us off and we're gonna head to our tent for the night. Go camping. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Let's hope we don't get eaten by a crocodile. We just found out that they spotted a saltwater crocodile. It was only a small one that was a meter and a half long. <laughs> <laughs> we got perch. Oh man. <laughs> you the key for, for your tent? Thank you. We got the tent. It's a nice tent. It's it a nice with. tent. A sleeping mat, sleeping bag, pillow. Everything you need. And uh, a key to lock it too. And it's in this little tent village, which is fairly big. I guess concentrated. I'm really envious of those people in the front row because they have like beach view. And we're like second to last row. We're in the thick of it. Yeah. If you got more money, there's some nice yurts. It looks like the yurts have electricity, AC, and the little patio area. Also in the area that we had lunch earlier, there are some bungalows that you can choose from if you don't want to do the camping option. And there's really good 4G here, actually. They have a cell phone tower, like, right up on the island. And these are the grounds. It looks like you can bring your own tent and go camping, too. Trash receptacles. These are the showers and the toilets. It doesn't have any toilet paper, but it has the day or bum gun, whatever you want to call it. And there's also these hoses around to watch you eat. And there's no hot water in the showers, but it's still like kind of like medium warm, kind of like ambient temperature, so it's not too bad anywhere in the tropics. They have a cooking area that's pretty nice. Good. And this is the amazing beach right on the campground. There is also a service desk here if you want to make any bookings or you have any questions, as well as another restaurant on this part of the island for the visitors who are camping. It's only open at certain times of the day, so be aware of that, but they do have drinking water available all day. Also here, you can charge your electronics and rent a locker for your valuables if you want to. The campground is really nice and we really struggled to find any information about this online. So that's why we did it so thoroughly. Um, but now we gotta go skedaddle onto the pier and they said that they're gonna take us to like some spot to watch the sunset. Back on the boat. <laughs> wow. Ronnie hooked it up. <laughs> I know, I don't like seafood, so we got double dinner. So I got stir fry basil pork, mushrooms, spring rolls, pineapple, curry, and uh, rice. And Brandy got tuna curry, some sort of, I don't even know, cured shrimp, fried fish, stir fry with shrimp, whole pineapple. We spent the rest of the night getting dinner and we went on a little nature walk. 
with some British friends we made that, and now we're in our tent. We didn't want to spend a bunch of time filming all that because I thought it would be kind of boring to just like watch that. <laughs> yeah, we didn't find anything very interesting. So see you tomorrow morning. Yeah, so I'll see you guys in the morning. Just like up really late. I thought it was kind of rude. I think they were up until like 11 p.m. playing guitar. No one wants to see you play guitar. We have another full day of diving. So let's get ready. It's time to go. I have to go meet for breakfast. I was really hoping we were going to get like all nuts and not white bread. <laughs> Similar to what we had. Today. Yeah. Mystery sausage and white bread. <laughs> so we just ran into a local Thai girl who told us all about how to get here. So you can in fact get here without a tour group. So what you do is head to the docks, I guess, and it's about 50 to $60 uh, for a round trip per person to get here. And then once you're actually here, you can rent tents and stuff. And I guess there's a way to contact the staff ahead of time. Yeah, so you can get they have a website. Yeah. You got a book ahead of time. Yeah, but I think yeah. you have to be in Thailand to do that. You do, okay. yeah. If you don't want to worry about anything, just have everything figured out, all your meals, your tent, everything, the tour is a good deal. Yeah, but you could certainly do it for like a half to a third the price, depending on how yeah. long you stay. You can also go to the front desk and get um, boat tours out arranged for like a couple hundred baht a person too. Mm -hmm. So next time we're going to do that, but until then. For now, we already paid for it. We already paid. <laughs>the same thing every day. I feel like I'm gonna put like a two second segment of each of these <laughs> hey. so it doesn't get too boring just so you know where we go. Yeah and they can see what the reefs like. The reefs are still pretty damaged here sadly. Yeah I think they kind of like that everywhere. Yeah but see them while you can. He just said he saw sharks at this one. That's comforting, Alan. ride because the long tail motors are extremely loud yeah. like even right now I got a little bit of tinnitus but the last two dive sites I'd say almost completely dead mm -hmm. uh, but one of them they did take us to see sharks and they're very committed about it they swam around in the water with us for, for like, like at an least, hour right yeah, <laughs> like I mean it was a real trek that was very pretty cool, cool. and yeah. I really appreciate the, the actual guides taking the time to do that Ronnie <laughs> our guide has been like very 
detail. Ronnie and is the best. Want us to have a good time. Yeah, I am excited to see him again. I want to go see this monkey though. And I think we just took dinner and camping tonight. Maybe a little free time. Nothing a special. A little free time. A lot of free time. A lot of free time. I probably gonna cut that early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take Benadryl and drug myself to sleep tonight. Tent, sweet tent. <laughs> There was a really loud family last night, and it seems like they're gone. Hopefully. <laughs> Five or four. Two hours until dinner. Last day in paradise. I know. We just finished the checkout process, which is basically just clear out your tent. You bring your stuff that they're gonna take out to the boats that you pick up later. And and then you bring all your snorkel stuff and anything you might need with you the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that was really it, really easy. Tip your guide if they did a good job. We did. We, we loved Ronnie, he's awesome. <laughs> Our tour guide was awesome and got us hooked up with a Thai breakfast instead of American, and it does look a lot better, admittedly. Uh huh. Tau Bay and Inari Bay. Okay. That does look like a fishing boat, doesn't it? Yeah. I have the feeling these are a little more fished than they say. These are all the lights from fishing boats. Which is a bit of a shame. I hope they fix that one of these days. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna ruin their tourism if they ruin the water. Packing up to leave Surin Islands. I'm pretty sad. <laughs> um, I think we have one more dive. a little complimentary dinner at the end and it was pretty good yeah i think that was like had some like grilled chicken skewers and then just some other basic things out but it's all right huh. yeah so pretty pleased overall mm -hmm. and then a bus ride back they give you free transportation back to the hotel well, it's, paid, but <laughs> it's included in the price you don't yeah. you don't have to like figure it out so get you all sorted with a meal ride home pretty good overall had an amazing time. Would yeah. 10 out of 10 do it again. Yeah, they made it very easy. I yeah. would suggest going with them. And I think for the price overall, I think it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely do it yourself for like a third to a half of the price, depending on how long you stay. Like really, it comes down the longer you stay there because it's only like 300 baht per night. That and I think the ease, like them prepping everything for you, like we didn't have to think about a thing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's the real benefit to it. You know, if you pay like another hundred dollars each or something. Yeah, total. Total, and it's it's you know they do everything for you. So. Yeah, I would say if you're on vacation, like a shorter vacation, anything under a couple weeks, I would definitely do it the way we did it, where you pay for the tour. But if you have a lot more time here, like maybe you're coming for a month, or maybe you have a longer visa, I would do it the more local way if you could. Because yeah. that gives you room for any mistakes or if you want to stay longer. Definitely. 
if you live here, do it on your own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it.